the theme of gaming monitors in 2025 seems to be dual modes. When you can't decide which resolution and refresh rate to get, these monitors have modes to natively support a high resolution with a lower refresh rate or a higher refresh rate with a lower resolution. These are pretty helpful if you like playing some games with detailed graphics and you just care about high frame rates with other games. Hey, I'm Nicholas from Ratings.com. Today we're going to review the new LG 27G 850AB. It's a dual mode monitor that just launched as part of LG's 2025 Ultra Gear lineup. It doesn't replace an older model, so it's something totally new. You might think that the name sounds familiar, but no, it's very different from the 27GP850B from a few years ago, which was an entry level 1440p model. This new model is the opposite. It's a premium display with a 4K 240Hz screen, and the dual mode switches it to a 1080p resolution and 480Hz refresh rate. Plus, it's one of a handful of these dual mode monitors to have an IPS panel. In theory, it fills a need in the market. You can get a dual mode 4K 240Hz monitor that isn't an OLED. But how does it perform, and is it worth getting? Before getting into it, let's take a quick look at the design. It's pretty simple, with some branding and RGB lighting on the back to complement your gaming setup. It comes with a sturdy stand that holds the screen well and doesn't wobble much. Plus, you could adjust it in a few ways, which helps you place the monitor how you want. That said, you might find that it's still a bit high with the stand at its lowest because there's nearly 4 inches of space between the bottom bezel and the desk. You'll also see that all the inputs are in the back of the monitor and face downwards, so they can be hard to reach. It comes with two USB-A ports to connect extra devices, and the audio jack also serves as a microphone input. Plus, it supports DTS Headphone X to simulate surround sound. But the main takeaway is that it has high bandwidth HDMI and DisplayPort inputs to take advantage of modern gaming consoles and graphics cards. More on that soon. And the last thing you'll notice when looking at the monitor is that it has a button underneath the bottom bezel. This isn't a power button. It's to easily switch between the dual mode settings to go from 4K to 40Hz to 1080p 480Hz. You can get either of these signals over DisplayPort or HDMI without any issues. Because they're each high bandwidth ports, your graphics card doesn't even need to use DisplayStream compression to reach the 480Hz refresh rate with a 1080p resolution. However, it does if you want the 4K 240Hz signal over either connection. Regardless of the mode or connection you're using, the monitor supports any common VRR format to reduce screen tearing. Motion looks good overall in both dual modes. Of course, you should use the 480Hz mode if you want a smoother feel. But if you compare both modes at the same refresh rate, they perform about the same. Even the response time overdrive settings perform similarly. The only difference is that low frame rate compensation or LFC for short, kicks in earlier on the 480Hz mode. This means that if you start at a high frame rate and use VRR as it goes down to 60fps, LFC kicks in and refreshes the screen at 120Hz. So in that case, motion handling is the same as with a 120Hz signal. This only happens if you're dropping down in frame rates though, and not if you game with a fixed frame rate, even if you have VRR enabled. In that case, the overdrive settings perform the same in either of the dual modes. We suggest using the fast overdrive setting because faster has too much inverse ghosting. Overall, motion does look good on this monitor, but it definitely has more blur than an OLED. One area where there's more of a difference between the dual modes is with VRR flicker. Normally, IPS monitors like this have almost no flicker with changing frame rates, which is the case in the 240Hz mode. But because the 480Hz mode has a bigger refresh rate range, it does actually have a bit of VRR flicker. It isn't enough to be too distracting, but you might see it in dark scenes when there's a big change in the frame rate, like a loading menu. At least both modes have low input lag at any refresh rate for a responsive feel. Sure, the 480Hz dual mode has slightly higher input lag when gaming at 120Hz, but it's less than a millisecond more you won't even notice the difference. This low input lag helps for any type of gaming, especially if you need fast reactions. This includes gaming with consoles, and luckily, the monitor supports pretty much any signal 
from a PS5 or Xbox. Although you'll want to use the 4K mode to get the most out of the console with detailed images. Now that we know what it's like for gaming, what about its picture quality? To start, it comes with an IPS black panel. This means it has a better contrast ratio than other IPS monitors. But this isn't to say that the contrast is good, because it isn't. It's still pretty low at around 1700 to 1, and blacks look great next to bright highlights. And unfortunately, its local dimming feature doesn't improve this either. It's edge lit with only 8 zones, and it performs badly. Sure, the local dimming does improve the black levels with most content, but any bright object on a dark background causes a ton of haloing. You can see this with subtitles, but it isn't too distracting either. Though there are some bigger downsides with this local dimming. The algorithm is slow at keeping up with fast moving objects, so you'll notice that a zone is slow to turn off after an object has moved out of it. Another negative with this feature has to do with brightness. It causes an aggressive change in brightness between different content or scenes, which is also known as ABL. You might find this distracting with general desktop use, like when you're minimizing and maximizing windows. It also dims small highlights against a dark background, so they look muted. This is pretty much the opposite of what local dimming should do, as you want something that makes highlights stand out. You may prefer not using local dimming at all if you want a bright screen, because it's actually dimmer in SDR and HDR with it on. It gets pretty bright without it, enough to fight glare in most well-lit rooms. However, visibility is still a problem in sunny rooms. The matte coating doesn't absorb a ton of light, and instead it spreads it out across the screen. This means the screen can be hard to properly see if you have it opposite a sunny window. Besides the brightness, this monitor also has good color accuracy before any sort of calibration. It has a dedicated sRGB mode that doesn't oversaturate colors, but it has white balance and gamma issues. You'll need to calibrate it to fix these problems. At least it displays a wide range of colors once you do, including in the Adobe RGB color space. It also displays a wide range of colors in HDR. It has minimal inaccuracies in the DCI-P3 NREC 2020 color spaces, but it doesn't make colors look very dark or very vivid for a punchy HDR experience. The last thing we want to talk about regarding picture quality is text clarity. Text looks sharp when you're in the 4K mode. This is what you should expect from a 4K monitor, but text looks a lot worse in the 1080p mode. Even though you could simulate a 24 inch screen in the 1080p mode, scaling is bad, making text look even more blurry. Basically, only use these 1080p dual modes for gaming and go back to the 4K mode for browsing the web or reading any documents. Now that we know how it performs, we can go back to our main question. Is the LG worth getting? In a vacuum, it's a solid gaming monitor that most people would enjoy. It's actually the first 4K 240Hz dual mode monitor with an IPS panel. Specific, I know, but it holds a unique position in the monitor market because of it. It doesn't mean it's the only option you could get with a dual mode feature. There are quite a few more like that. The Dell AW2725QF and the AOC U27G4R are other 4K dual mode options with an IPS panel, but they have a lower refresh rate. As for the LG, there isn't much to fault about the monitor itself. But even though there aren't other displays exactly like this one, it's when you start comparing it to other models that you notice what it's missing. For starters, there are a couple of 4K 240Hz dual mode monitors with an OLED panel, like the LG 32GS 95UEB. It has many of the same features as the 27G 850AB, including the max 480Hz refresh rate. But there are a few advantages to getting an OLED monitor like this one. It has better picture quality with deeper blacks, brighter highlights, and much better motion. It isn't that much more expensive either, so it's probably worth spending more on if you want the best performance with the dual mode monitor. That said, an OLED isn't the best choice for everyone. The 27G 850AB still gets brighter overall, and it doesn't risk burn-in, which is something to consider if you want a monitor for working during the day and gaming at night. And if that's the case, but you want better picture quality than the 27G 850AB, there are some mini LED options you can get, like the Samsung Odyssey Neo G8. 
It's also a 4K 240Hz display, but without a dual mode. What you do get is a higher native contrast ratio, and its local dimming feature does a much better job at improving the picture quality in dark scenes. It doesn't get much brighter overall than the LG, but at least small highlights pop for an impactful HDR experience. That said, it's not a perfect alternative. It comes with bugs, doesn't support DisplayPort 2.1 bandwidth, and has distracting VRR flicker. So, while the LG has some advantages over other dual mode monitors, and it's something to consider if you're looking for a model with these exact specs, there are just better options out there. That doesn't mean it's a bad monitor. It's actually pretty solid, but for a bit more, you could find better options. That's all for our review of the LG 27G 850AB. If you want more details, check out our written review. The link is in the description below. Until next time, I'm Nicholas from where we help you find the best product for your needs. Ciao.